So with the cork, there's no default, at least that I'm aware of, there's no default cork setting. So I'm going to grab from the substance material something that can be a similar sheen or texture. A lot of the time I will just choose matte because I'm going to apply a separate material. So let me find matte and I'll come, I'll drag and drop matte onto the cork. You turn off that preview, you can already hear my fan. Okay, now that I have the matte texture applied, I'll come over to base color. But what I want to do is add that cork texture. And short of creating a texture, my quick fix and trick is to come over to this image tab. And I have my cork texture here. You can see that it's just an image. And I will drag and drop that image onto the cork. And depending on the size of the, the grain, um, you can play with this pattern to increase or decrease the amount there. I think a little bit smaller is going to be more realistic. And that's how you make the cork. So now I need to combine these shapes to make the cork fit into the wine bottle. So I'll select the cork and the wine bottle. I'll come down to our align tools and click center and center and top. Now you can see the wine, the cork is inside of the wine bottle. And if you intend on having these two together always and you want to be able to move around the shape and have them in the same location, then I select both of these and I click on this folder and it creates a group. So now I can select and not have to select both each time. Now I can say wine, bottle, and cork for that group name. And now you can see it moves around together. I think I want to add a background to this as well. Sometimes a white background is great. Sometimes I like to add a little bit of a cream background. So let me come here and add a cream background. And let me see how this is looking. It's looking good. Now I'm going to play with the lighting. So let me scroll down to our lighting setting and I will choose this three point light. Now let's see with our render preview how that looks. I think we'll play with the intensity. Let me up the fill light and now you can see it is in, it's changing to the color that I want it to. I'm also gonna raise up the height a little bit and play with the backlight. I'm trying to replicate our example here. I know it won't be exactly perfect, but I wanna get as close as possible. So with this, I'll bring the height down. It's really gonna light up those edges like our example. And I can turn up the intensity of that, as well as our key light. Let me bring this one, I'll bring the height down on this. Ooh, that was a cool reflection. Okay, we're still having a weird glare that I don't love. So let me go back to the fill light. I have a feeling it might be too high. And if all else fails, let's go back to our texture settings in the wine bottle and see if we can play with this to make it closer to what we're looking for. Let me reduce the index of refraction and see where that gets us. I think that's better. I'm gonna take it one step further and I'm gonna change the color. So now that I'm in the same green family, let me try it a few hues lighter. Oh, I like that. I'm gonna bring the translucence up all the way and see how that looks too. That's looking more realistic for sure. Let me go even a shade lighter. And that is looking amazing. I'm very happy with the bottle. And if you want to take it a step further and you want to put the liquid inside of the bottle, let me go back and show you how to accomplish that. So go back to your wine shape. You already have the inside line done, which is where the liquid would fill to. So I will make a copy of this and come over to 3D materials in the appearance panel and select the eyeball, turn that off for a minute. It's just so I can have a better view of the lines. So the normal fill of a wine bottle is gonna be closer down to the neck. So I'm gonna take my scissors tool and clip right there. And I'm also gonna come down to the base and clip that shape. And delete the outside line because we don't need it. The other thing I'll do is take the pen tool and I'm going to connect these shapes. I'm holding shift so that I can follow that cross section line, the halfway point that we established in the beginning, and then click to connect 
the other line that we cut and make one complete shape. Now I can click on 3D and materials again, and you can see this is the shape of the wine liquid inside the bottle. This looks a little unnatural, right? So I'll come in to the top and I will add a few points here using anchor point tool. I'll come and I'll make some ripples. I call it the Jurassic Park effect, just to make it look like there's some movement happening, that it's not totally still. It helps it look a little more natural. Now I'll select the object and I'll come back, export selection, and call this the liquid and make sure OBJ is selected and click export. Now come back to dimension and I'm going to drag and drop the liquid into our model and I will scroll to, you have the options for liquid of water, beer, and olive oil. I'll choose beer because it already has a tint and I can easily change this to a wine color. Over, I'm gonna make this like a deep burgundy red. Yeah, and it's gonna be a cloudier wine. I'll call this the liquid inside of dimension and select the group and the liquid, come to align and we will click center and center. But the liquid doesn't sit directly on the ground. It sits with that gap from the bottom of the glass. So we need to move the wine up a little bit. Sometimes those tools, when you're moving things manually, want to snap to different areas. So I'll use this position tool. Y axis is up and down. So I will click one centimeter just to start and see. Nope, we need, let's try five centimeters. That's not quite right either. So I'm gonna zoom in and see we're almost there, but there's still a gap. So let me try, oops, let me try seven centimeters. That looks like it's a pretty snug fit. Let me zoom out. And if you find a positioning that you really like, uh, you can come up here to the camera bookmarks and click this plus sign. I will say this one would be front above. If I want one that is straight on, but kind of from the ground angle, then I can just name that one front below or front hero, whatever makes sense to you. I call it a hero shot because when you see heroes, they're kind of looking upwards and that is how I'm viewing this. That's looking pretty convincing. Um, I do see that there's a little bit of a line here and that can indicate that we're too close with the liquid and the bottle. So to remedy that, I will sometimes make that liquid shape just a hair smaller. So we'll come back to our panel here, select liquid and under size, I hit this lock and I will select just a fraction of a centimeter, maybe one whole centimeter smaller. So we'll do 208 centimeters and then adjust it accordingly. Let's check and see if that weird light refraction's gone. Yep, that fixed it. So there may be some tweaking to do to get that look that you want. That might be a little dark for your wine that you're selecting or for the liquid. So feel free to experiment, change those colors around and get the effect that you're looking for. Now to add your label to the wine bottle, grab a PNG or JPEG version of your design and simply drag and drop onto the surface that you wanna add it to. So for this, I've dragged my label on and it's lining up really nicely. I can add a metallic element to it so that it's shiny when I have my render on. I can also adjust the roughness if I wanted it to be a matte label, not high gloss, you would adjust the roughness. If you wanted it to be a little translucent, you can adjust that as well. If you were doing a spot metallic, you would layer them on top. So this would be your base and then the elements that you want to be metallic, place on top, line them up and change the metallic to the level that you want. If it's a brush metallic, it'll be on the lower side or a gloss metallic, you would take it all the way to the end here, like so. And that's how it's done. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial really helpful, but if you run into any questions, please leave them below. I will answer them. And if there's any videos that you wanna see, any specific tutorials you wanna see in the future, I do take requests. So leave those in the comments as well. Subscribe for more and I will bring you more videos soon. Until next time.